All right, nieces and nephews, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the first, finally, after three months of having this bike and getting it all working ish. Today's going to be like the first moto vlog with it, really, except for the day that I picked it up. Uh, we're going to be Dyna Bros today. Um, this is going to be a good test because I was, I've, I've had it up to operating temperature, but uh, we're going to be out, you know, in the, in the summer summer day washed the bikes today so this is not only going to be uh as bright as the sun i'm sure we're going to catch a lot of looks nice my seat's still wet yeah i'm getting kind of uh, wet in the ass too well like you said the other day it wasn't wouldn't be the first time oh oh my god my jeans are gonna be soaked it's gonna look like you pissed yourself by the time we yeah get it, no it's going to no i can feel it yeah it's gonna look like we both did that's fine. We're, we can be Dyna Bros, Piss Bros, too. Or like severe swamp ass. You guys were watching when I put the LED tail light on with the integrated turn signals. I said, hey, I'm not going to put that load resistor on because it seems to be working just fine. And it does back there. Something I forgot was that when I turn it on, that stays solid. So uh, we're going to probably have to put that uh, load equalizer, load stabilizer on there anyway, which is fine because i got to put the uh, uh, front turn signals on anyway once I figure out how to wire them. What I don't know when they put these bars on is whether or not they um, cut the turn signal wires. I know a lot of people will get rid of unnecessary things for whatever build they're doing. Uh, I, I would hope they would have had the foresight to uh, say, hey, maybe, maybe the next person... Uh, or maybe I might want to put turn signals back on this thing. I mean, you, you never know. Uh, we're going to find out. Or they might have said, hey, let's not mess up the integrity of the uh, wiring sub harness and let's leave it all together. That's probably the smarter play. But given that whoever worked on this thing also routed the oil line backwards, uh, I'm not going to be surprised whatever happens. Well, look at your shiny, clean motorcycle. Yeah, I can see out of my mirrors today. How did you get that so clean? You did it for me. Isn't that nice? Uh, very nice of you. So I just want to let it be known that she has never washed my bike. No, but I've washed his car many, many times. She has washed my four-wheel vehicles. I, I didn't. I don't necessarily like how it looks having that uh, the little adapter piece. I'll show you guys later if I remember to. That allows for both the uh, oil pressure light and the gauge. It just looks. Uh, I mean, nobody's going to look at it really, right? But I see it, and I think it looks kind of... Like, there's a lot of shit going on there for no reason. So today I had the bright idea. Hey, let me uh, put the switch back in, you know, where it's supposed to be by itself. And uh, put the oil gauge in the tappet screen hole. Well, I did that, and then I was right back to where I was a month and a half ago. I had zero oil pressure, nothing on the uh, gauge and my oil light was on so clearly clearly every machine has its preferences on how they are ridden so this one wants to be double plugged <laughs> yeah this one uh the only way i have oil pressure is if i stack them up where they are now and uh i i don't know i, I don't understand why like what causes that is it a problem I don't know. I mean, these bikes never came with oil gauges, so maybe if I just had the oil pressure switch in the hole that it goes in and left tap it screen cover screw on, you know, maybe it wouldn't even do that. I don't know. I, I should actually try all those options, but uh, I'm, I'm not the most thorough troubleshooter, or I, I can be, but I think about things after the fact and I have to go back and undo work that I already did. You, know, you guys know how it is. I mean, maybe if I was a professional mechanic. Here's the deal. I reached out to uh, Pedro, uh, Wanderer Portugal, yesterday. Uh, he's traveling out of town. His shop is closed right now. And I asked him when he got back if he knew what his schedule looked like. He could squeeze me in. Uh, just because I fixed this oil issue, I don't know how long I was riding like that. I rode it at least, you know, 100 miles that way the guy that i got it from claims he didn't ride it much i kind of believe him you know may, maybe he rode it for 50 miles so maybe this thing has 100 150 miles on it with very low or no oil pressure you know what i'm saying so i asked him i said hey obviously on paper i'm not asking you 
for anything, but uh, I'd, I'd love to get it to you, or if you want to come to my house, whatever, and, you know, take a look at this thing. Just give it a good once over, listen to it, look at it, ride it, you know, tell me what you think. I, I'm sure it needs more things. I'm, I'm sure it does. Maybe not. Maybe it's perfect. Doubt it, but maybe. You know, I still want to do the work. You know, if he comes up with some stuff that I need, I just want a professional's opinion on it. You know, if he comes back and, and he's got, you know, a backlog of people waiting to be seen, I might look at taking it somewhere else. I'm not, not that I'm impatient necessarily. If Bo might disagree with that, uh, I'd like to give him the opportunity first to have you know, somewhat of a relationship with him. How does the uh, banana hammock smell and sound back there, baby? I mean, I can't smell it. It's good, right? Why are these people scared? I don't know. Yeah, what are your brakes always on for? Uh, you guys, if you if you ever watch my speedometer on this bike in particular, oh man, yeah, turn, get out of here. Uh, I would advise you not to. This thing is um, not right. And uh, I don't know if it's because the sprocket in the back or if the speed sensor that goes on the transmission just needs to be changed. There's not a whole lot of electronics on here, so I don't know how you need to calibrate that. I don't even know if there's, I don't think there's a computer. I, I'm pretty sure this bike is extremely mechanical. Just enough electronics to keep your headlights and your spark plugs going. I'm gonna come to a complete stop here and see, uh, see what this oil pressure does. So the light's not on, that's good. So the gauge still goes to zero at a stop. There's a car behind us. Okay, let's go. Uh, but the light didn't come on, which is good. You watched the video where I fixed the oil oil routing, oil pressure issues on this thing. Um, I, I wasn't getting the oil light and uh, it was a bad switch. Now, like I said, that, that is a new switch that I put on either at the end of May or middle of June, something like that. Uh, so you'd think, oh, it's a new switch, it should be fine. That's true. But uh, when I thought I wasn't going to be using it anymore, I didn't really take it care of it. You know, I kind of dinged it up with the channel locks I was using. I had it sitting on the lift, rolling around, you know, hit the thing by everything. So uh, the reason why the light was intermittent is because I had to push the end of it to get it to come on and off. Well, this is another new switch that I ordered last week, and it came in yesterday. I put it on today, and this one operates like it's supposed to. Uh, but as far as the oil pressure reading zero, you know, at idle, I've got a couple, couple thoughts on it. One, uh, in Pedro's camp. Now, keep in mind, this is where you guys comment. Some people comment, oh, you're rambling. Yes, I ramble. Keep in mind that, you know, you ask several mechanics, you know, what their opinions are, you're going to get several times two of that opinion, right? So I trust with everything I have, both Pedro and Shelby. Pedro says they don't read pressure when it's hot. None of these. Pages. I asked him last week, I said, are you talking about just cheap gauges or like, is there a brand that works better? He said, no, they all do it. Okay. I believe him. And I think that's uh, a lot what's going on here. On the other side, Shelby says, you got a really cheap generic oil gauge because that thing should still be reading at hot somewhere between five and seven PSI um, at idle. Okay. I believe him too. This is a cheap generic oil pressure gauge. I don't know what a name brand oil pressure gauge looks like. I did order a new one today. I ordered it from Lowbrow Customs. If nothing else, at least the name on the face plate of the oil gauge kind of matched the color of the old banana in here. So I feel kind of good about it, you know. But riding, like even now, I am getting the same 15 to 20 PSI uh, out riding it that I, as I was last week. And I know I know we're up to, uh, I, I know that's probably plenty. Pedro, once again, last week when I was talking to him, he said Evos don't run off of PSI, they run off of volume. So, uh, you know, not only have I heard that everywhere around the internet, but now a trusted mechanic friend of mine said the same thing. So I figure if the light's not on, we're good. This bike, I've been riding this bike, well, now that I can ride it, exclusively for the last week. Uh, nothing can replace the king. The yeah, Swamp King is always going to be a king. It's just, uh, this is a bike that I bought in May and have not had the opportunity to ride it. 
overcame some trials and tribulations on it. So I'm so, kind of celebrating, you know. And you guys, if you have multiple bikes, you know what it's like to just want to ride a different one. And that's what I'm going through right now. Um, I am off Wednesday. I plan on cleaning up Road King, uh, riding it around the latter half of next week. But for now, no, I'm just enjoying this thing. So we are going up to uh, Saints and Sinners Pub. Uh, up by Teddy Morris' Daytona Harley-Davidson that is not in Daytona. They should put that underneath it. Teddy Morris' Daytona Harley-Davidson that's not actually in Daytona.com. And I think while I'm there, I'm going to get uh, new spark plugs. I don't. These aren't bad. I don't think they're bad. But uh, the bike was running super rich before I rebuilt the carburetor, right? And uh, I tried to clean them off, you know, with some parts cleaner or whatever. And uh, I took them out today. Now, keep in mind that I haven't completely finished tuning the carburetor. I've done, I did the factory recommended settings. I came back from that test ride, I don't know, end of June, middle of June, something like that. And I adjusted the idle mixture screw and the, uh, the idle speed screw. God, it took me a second to think of that. Um, accelerator pump seems fine, it's responsive. What I didn't get to do yet is really go out and check the uh, the main jet. There's a couple of ways you can do that. And today, I took the spark plugs out today. So these spark plugs were three months old. You know, they were already running under an extremely rich condition before. Uh, so I, I don't know, I want new plugs in there. I want to put new plugs in the day that I go out, probably Wednesday, and uh, check my main jets, jet to see, you know, if, that, if I got the right main jet in there. If it's still running too rich, I'm gonna be very surprised. Anyway, we're gonna get on up to uh, Saints and Sinners, have a cold beverage, and uh, yeah, we'll see you up there. So the bike uh, performed very well all the way here. So I thought. All right, so we get here and uh, Beaumont was like, oh, look, people are leaking oil all over here. Yeah, by people, she means me. So that at least that big spot is mine. I can see it actively dripping um, and I can see that my swing arm is a little bit wet and I can see that there it's a little bit wet there coming down the spout which I just changed the o-rings on last week so uh, a leaky Evo this isn't world first news but like I said this is kind of a test run to see how it's gonna do in the Florida heat uh, I'm gonna let it cool down for just a little bit I need to check the oil see if it's been burning or leaking the whole way and thankfully we're at the Harley shop so I can get some oil if I need to, right? Uh, I love it though. I wouldn't have it any other way. I like troubleshooting shit, so this motorcycle is clearly going to let me scratch that itch. Well, the good news is, see the way I look at it is, uh, the earth giveth and Uncle Bo Gator giveth back. That's, uh, that's how we're looking at this oil. Big ass bottle now. Now, there, there is a reason that we came to Saints and Sinners. <laughs> I wanted to be right next to Teddy Moore so I could get spark plugs, but uh, thankfully I was able to go in and get some uh, oil as well. Now, the oil is going on the ground when it's hot. It stopped leaking after we were here. So, when we get home, I fully expect to see evidence of oil in the oil filter slash carburetor. Yeah, so I'm a little perplexed, a little disheartened. Somebody commented, hey, at least you got a lot of good content out of this bike. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you a little secret about old Uncle Bo Gator. Actually, no. No, no, no. Hold on. I'm going to ask you a question. Put in the comments the answer. Why do you think I bought this thing? So I looked at this thing while we were back there when it was nice and hot. Thinking to myself, self, where's this oil coming from? I said, and uh, I can't tell. It's not the drain plugs. It honestly looks like it's coming uh, from the spout assembly somewhere. We already know that the spout assembly is like the filler cap and like two other pieces all combined. Hey, here's the freeway. Yeah, it's just something else to look out for. But the only problem is, so I'm gonna have to wait until this thing cools off, clean all the oil up. I had to get it this hot again in order to troubleshoot. Hey, are you all right back there? Is your bike broken? It is not broken. 
<laughs> I can't even see your headlight. You're so far back. I'm I'm just right. Oh my God! Now slow down for you. Cruising. <laughs> All right, we're going to head back into D-Land. Unless something crazy comes up and we got to stop on the side of the road. Oh, God, I hope not. I hope not, too, but you never know. We'll see you down there. We just pulled into the uh, the old Glenwood Tavern. It's one of our favorite bars. And uh, I want you guys to look at... Uh, can you guys see the shiny? All the oil on the tire. Now, the last red light I stopped at, I didn't notice that there was a whole pool, oops, pool of oil on top of the oil pump. And my um, pressure gauge there was kind of rotating on itself. So I honestly think, I honestly think Shelby was on something when he said that was a piece of shit gauge. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's blowing out of that um, and or the uh, filler cap. So. We'll figure it out, but either way, uh, we got to get that damn that whole situation figured out. All right, fam, uh, that's about going to wrap this video up. It's uh, it's now Wednesday. This is three days since we uh, we did the ride out in the heat. I didn't do any work on the bike once we got back. I haven't done any work on the bike since. I have a very very busy schedule in August, uh, from about six thirty in the morning all the way until eight thirty at night. So. I'm kind of swamped. Today is uh, my day off, so I have a little time to edit and I may get out here and work on the bike. We'll start another video with some of the troubleshooting steps, but I'm gonna show you where I think the oil leak is coming from. Uh, by the way, I mentioned earlier, I was gonna show you guys this assembly I'm talking about. You see how you got this coming up here and you got the oil switch and the oil gauge. Uh, I don't think I did a good enough job uh, surprise surprise of tightening all this stuff down as far as it would go I uh, put it on until I got some resistance and I kind of stopped and um, as you can see the oil gauge is upside down um, this was rotating freely like I said at that one red light so that's a problem so I'm gonna need to take this stuff off tighten everything down I'm gonna put some more pipe dope on tighten this stuff down a lot more and go out and get it hot again. And then from there, I think I can uh, I can see if if that's where the oil leak was coming from. Um, with the oil pooling on top of the oil pump, and the fact that it, that all of the oil seems to be leaking down the right side, you know, on the swing arm, on the right side of the tire, etc. I think we can kind of narrow it down to the right side of the bike, and hopefully that's all it is. I mean, it could be more. Hope not, but uh, the oil is dripping in more places because when I park it, you know, gravity is going to move it around in different spots so it can fall down. But anyway, I uh, appreciate you coming along for this video. We're going to get this thing right. We're going to get this thing right. I firmly believe that. Thanks for coming along for this video and all videos. And until next time, we'll see you later.